All right. Good morning and happy Sunday, my Leak Code Problem Solving friends. It is 5.51 in the a.m. and it's time to shine. We'll be doing the contest from yesterday, contest 372. All right. Yeah. So here, I share my screen. 372 from yesterday, virtually. And here we go. Time to shine. Open these guys up. Okay. And then keep track of time. It's 5.51 in the a.m. Oops, here we go. Delete the right mesh character of it until it's two. Okay, so we should be able to do this just from left to right. Okay, here's the game plan. It's 5.52 in the AM. Took about one minute to read. So the game plan here is to uh, perform a linear scan from left to right while the constraint, right, I'll just say this A, B, and C, how about A, B, C, and here we'll just come, okay, capitals, whatever. A sub I is equal to B sub I, is equal to C sub I, and then we'll return the remainder, right? Return the, return, oops, return accumulated remainder, oops, remainder. Okay, so that's the game plan. Still 552, so start the implementation. Let's do this. Uh, I equals, oops, zero. Well, and let's do X, Y, and Z. How about for the cardinality of A, B, and C correspondingly? X, Y, Z equals the cardinality of A, the cardinality of A, B, and the cardinality of A, C correspondingly. And then while I is less than the minimum of X, Y, and Z. And A sub I equals B sub I equals C sub I, I plus equals one. Then we'll return X minus I plus Y minus I plus C, oops, C minus I, I think so, that was good. Let's see what happens. I'm expecting two and negative one, two and nine, oh, holy cow. Uh-oh, okay, so if I, otherwise negative one, okay, I missed that part, dang. Okay, let's submit it now. It's accepted at 5.54, 54 a.m. So that took about three minutes the implementation in Python 3, which is accepted. Yay. OK, that's a good start. And 1 hour 26. All right. Oops, let's just grab this to check up where we're at. Q2, might as well just keep jamming, right? Whatever. Sometimes I, I stop and pause and do the, the question in multiple languages, but I think I'll just move on. I'll sip my coffee and on to Q2. Q2 at 5.54 in the AM, and it's time to keep on shining. <laughs> okay, we got to group the ones and the zeros together. So we should be able to pre-process this from left to right and right to left, and then do a linear scan to find out what the minimum is. So that's the game plan. Game plan, pre-process input from left to right, and oops, from right to left, All right? So this will be the uh, accumulated cost, right? Cost of swaps from zeros to ones, ones to zeros correspondingly, right? Right, the zeros on the left, ones on the right. Okay. 
Swap, swap. Oh, wait, this is a swap. Swap them. Oh, okay. So actually, hold on. This is, uh, hold up. Hold up. I misread. Misread. <laughs> Backtrack. <laughs> Game plan is actually, all right, we can swap these things. So just do uh, I, J, like N words, right? This index I goes this way from left to right, and then J goes this way, right to left, isn't it? All right, so if we ever counter a, a one, we'll have to swap it with the, the zero. All right, I think so. Let's see. Right, it's a string of characters, we'll just call it uppercase. All right, it's 556 in the AM. Oops. And we'll start the implementation. Oh, actually, 557. Okay. Implementation. Oops. Implement. Implement. Implementation begins. Here we go. Let's see what happens. All right, so IJ is based on N is the cardinality in for a string S. Zero and n minus one for the leftmost and rightmost index correspondingly, right? And then they go inwards. So I can proceed inwards as it equals zero. So while i is less than j, then return the total steps t, which is accumulated in piecemeal fashion here. So if S sub i is equal to the character zero, then we'll increment i. Let's just do these in, in piecemeal fashion. So if we can move that one, we'll just do it. Otherwise, if we can move this one, S sub j, then we'll do it. Otherwise, if we can't move i or j, that means i is one and j is zero. Then we'll have to swap them, right? S sub i equals s sub j. Okay, uh, t plus equals one for the swap. We don't necessarily have to actually do the swap, right? So in this case, we'll do i plus equals one, j minus equals one, right? And then our total is incremented. Do this as like an atomic operation. Okay, I think that's good. It's 558 in the AM. Uh oh, return. Oops, what am I doing here? Just return T. Small mistake. 110 zero is not correct. Okay, so this one is not right. Why is it two? I thought we could swap them. Return the minimum steps. Oh, they have to be adjacent. Oops. Okay, so it is like a, okay, so you have to pay for the difference in the indexes. Okay, the total is J minus I. Okay, I slightly misread that, but uh oh, that's not right either. Negative one, holy cow. How did I get negative one? T plus equals, What? Okay, it's 5.59 in the AM, and I'm just like, what the heck is going on here? 5.59 AM. This is not doing, right? This code is not doing what I expected. Oh, maybe I need some more coffee. <laughs> hmm. All right, it's six o'clock. Get our printf debugging on, or let's see. Debugging begins. Okay, so t plus equals one. Oh, actually, oh, that makes sense. We don't have to do the hop from the leftmost to that one, right? Wait, no, we do. This guy does have to hop two. It can't just hop one. One and two. It should be two minus zero. Why is it 
Zero. What the heck is this? And why is it negative one? Holy cow. Negative one. Okay, all right, you can't move. All right, let's just step through this here real quick. All right, sometimes fast is slow, slow is fast with people, right? I'm part of people. I is here, J is here, and is there. Okay. So if S of I is zero, which is not, if S of J is one, which it is, with J there. Swap them, it should cost one, right? It's just one. What the heck? Negative one. J minus I. I mean, here, here's the thing. Here's where this is where we start. S sub I does not equal zero, so we cannot move I. S sub J does equal I, so, so J can go here, right? So J is this guy. In this case, S sub I is not zero, S sub J is not one. So we go into the else. Oh crap, okay, this is why, duh. <laughs> okay. Fast is slow and slow is fast with people, right? We're gonna be giving, forgiving and kind to ourselves. <laughs> Okay, that's good. It's six or two in the AM. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, y'all, you know, it's not easy to know that I'm going to publish this thing, win, lose, or draw. You know, I can make a complete idiot out of myself, which I often do. Yeah, but due to head to hell capitation, I kind of stopped caring. <laughs> okay, well, I made an idiot out of myself for the first couple hundred contests, you know, and it's another couple more failures, right? It's about eight min minutes. Uh, for the implementation oops, in Python 3, oops, which is accepted. And by the way, I want to take a little bit of a break while I sip my coffee and mention to y'all why I'm doing this. It's like, why, why would I spend my time doing this? I, um, one, I think it's helpful and I really enjoy it. I think it's beneficial practice. And also my brain gets a dopamine hit whenever I hit hit this thing, you know, hit submit and get accepted. It's, it's so cool, especially during a real contest, you know, like when my contest rating uh, is on the line, right? Kind of seems more meaningful, but doing a, a virtual contest is second best. And it's super cool because this is like super laid back, right? I can talk through how we go from reading the problem statement to a game plan to the actual implementation of the game plan, and then see how we change and debug the code on the fly here. So this is intended to be helpful uh, for others. So I participate in this program at, at work at Google it's called the champion interview program or something like that champion uh, something or other and you can y'all can ask your recruiter to to participate in it and it's basically uh, uh, a mock interview right so it's like an interview before the interview to help get out the jitters and provide some useful feedback to candidates to help them to do their best in their technical interviews and i love doing that it's like my favorite part of the job at google is like doing things like that like helping others and uh, part of my job role as uh, L5 SWE at Google, I, I'm obligated to do those things, but, you know, I, I like to do them just because I like to do them. You know, they call them community contributions and, you know, it's giving back to the community. And I, I just love giving to people. It's like the best experience in my life. Like I'm, I'm so excited to enter into the second half of my life. I'm like 40 something years old here now. So yeah, I, I, I see the second half of my life as a bunch of a given. So this is the best way that I can give to others. And I hope it helps, you know, because there's uh, the tech industry. It's, it's pretty hard right now to, to get uh, a job and get a, get a gig. And, you know, that's super important for folks like me because I'm a dad. I'm, I take care of my family. I'm the, the sole breadwinner. So, you know, this is my, my meal ticket. So like uh, Dr. Dre or uh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Dre, the rapper mentioned, you know, he's like, you, you're right. I'm, I'm going to kick it, right? This is my meal ticket. So yeah, being uh, where I've been to where I am now, it's it's like, I'm, I'm just so grateful. I got so lucky and, you know, to, to, to be lucky sometimes we, we got to put in the effort, right. To, to make those opportunities for ourselves when they do arrive. Anyhow, um, I'm going way off on a tangent, but anyhow, like the TLDR, right? I mean, this is supposed to be beneficial to others. So that's 
the whole reason I'm doing this, right? Write something short, concise, succinct. This is how, basically, yeah, how, how I got a job at Google, right? I've been working on Leak Code for seven years and I got like five no's and finally I got one yes over a seven year period. And I'm giving away all this knowledge that I've acquired over the seven years I've been Leak Coding for free. You know, I'm not asking for money or anything, you know? <laughs> Just take a look. A few solutions, you know. Yeah, I appreciate y'all support for for folks do, that have uploaded my solutions. I, I see a, a lot of the top voted solutions these days are just junk, and it, it's just like uh, it totally sucks. When I first started lead coding, I had a really hard problem even solving Q ones, the easies, and what's more demoralizing than not being able to solve a leak code question is not being able to understand people's solutions. It's like, okay, I read the problem. I try to solve it. I can't do it. I read people's solutions and I still don't understand it. That is just like totally demoralizing. It sucks. And then I later realized, and it took me a while to realize that people are just kind of like trying to prove themselves and show off a lot in the discussion boards, right? By posting their super compact, highly refactored solution, right? And not telling us like, how, how'd you get there? You know, that's what I want to know is like, how do you do this, right? And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here, right? The exact opposite. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm trying to improve myself, right? Help myself as I hopefully help others, right? So I, I believe, I strongly believe that we're here for each other. And we're better off working with each other than than against each other. Okay. Anyhow, I'm gonna <laughs> move forward before I keep ranting here. On to Q3. The, how long did this one take? That took eight minutes, three minutes, and eight minutes. Okay. And then I did a little bit of rambling. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So it's Q3, and it's six o eight in the a.m. And here we go. The maximum value of this X or that X or what is X or X is hmm. Let's grab this here real quick so I can play around with the problem statement. Okay, so a key question after reading this is question, oops, question, how to maximize a value with a, an X, XOR by X. Right, that's what I want to read this in more detail for. Okay, so let's take this one example at a time to come up with a game plan, right? Game plan here at the end here. Okay. Okay. Don't forget the mod part. Let's do this. Don't forget mod. I do this so much in contests and it's like plus one, plus five, you know, for each bug, dude. Don't forget, oops. Seven. Let's do this. Hopefully, I don't forget. Just, just write it in here. Okay, let's go through the examples. And then what is this? N two times N. N is small, actually. Okay, so actually, A and B are gigantic. The nice thing is, though, Python handles gigantic numbers pretty well. Oh, no, that's not gigantic. 250? No, 2 to the 50, yeah. 2 to the 50th power. This thing is no, right? This is gigantic. But we're just we're just thinking about bits there for ants. So instead, oops, instead, 
let's think of this as an array of characters of size 50, right? That makes our lives easier. So it's 50 by 50. If we think of it, and we just want to, we want to, I guess we can try all of them, right? N's 50, right? So root, oops, root, force try them all. That's the game plan, right? Since N equals 50 and the cardinality of the string is A and B. Cardinality of these guys is strings. Let's say string. Right, is also. Oops, what did I do here? And I this thing and the current that thing is also capped by 50, right? Just think of these as strings of characters, right? Charters. Right, there's, there's only 50 characters, right? Zero and one for the bits. Okay, so let's do this A and B. The strings A and B correspondingly. And then N is what we go up to, right? So we can go up to two to the N, right? So, right, zero. Do we ever want it to be XORed by zero? Here, actually, before we go into one of those details, let's go through the examples here real quick, right? Okay, so A, oops, A equals 12, B equals 5, and then N, oops, if it's to N equals 4, call uppercase, let's go uppercase. So we're saying the answer is 98 when x equals 2. So, yeah, I mean, whatever. We, who cares about that, right? Let's just, let's just do it then, right? The biggest string, I'm pretty sure Python will take care of strings for us, right? Nine eighty. Okay, hold on. So, oh, I see. Okay, so we do need giant numbers then, right? Okay, okay, okay. Never mind about strings. <laughs> Don't forget that mod. Okay, so let's do this. A B. All right, fine. We'll just let that be lowercase. That's going to be lowercase, but I'm going to go make this mod lowercase. Let me just do mod. Mod. Okay, let's just try them all, right? Brute force, try them all. Okay, 614. 614. I want to keep track of where my time's going. It took about six minutes. Six minutes for reasoning, right? Reading and reasoning. Implementation begins around here. Oops. Is, oops. We don't want strings actually, right? So this would be a little bit more challenging in C or, or some of those languages that overflow like Rust and such, right? But for Python, this is no problem, right? <laughs> just try them all here. I'll just say our candidate best turn best modulus mod. For x in range zero until two times n inclusive, candidate equals a x or x multiplied by b x or x. Right, according to the problem statement. Okay, and then best is the maximum of itself in this candidate. Keep things super simple, you know. 98, no, 
Uh oh. Okay, so Q, for example, one and three are okay. Failure on example two. Okay, 6.16 a.m. About two minutes. Oops, two minutes for the implementation. Implementation in Python 3. Oops, which is okay for example one and three, but fails for, oops, it, yeah, fails. Fails for example two. Oops, example. Example. Okay. Why is it 210? What the heck's going on here? Two to the, oh, two to the end, not two times in, okay, oops. Oops, okay, two to the end, not two times in, right? For the upper bound, oops, two times in. Okay, two to the end, oh, I see, okay. A linear scan of this will TLE. Okay, so that's, okay. Okay, here's the crux, right? The crux of this problem. That is a linear scan from zero to two to the n inclusive will TLA, right? It's a good start though, right? And it's good to have this realization. I coded this wrong at first, but it's two to the power of n inclusive. Right, plus one to make it inclusive. Okay, so this will TLE, but at least it should be a correct solution, right? Oh, dang, holy cow, this is not right. That does not look right at all. What the heck is going on here? Oh, do we? What? Holy cow, this is way off. True to the end. That's 25. Oh, it's not inclusive. Oh, I see. Okay. Does that matter that much? Maybe to the end, non inclusive. It does matter. Oh, okay. It's a big deal. Already. So this is a TLE then, right? Okay. It's 618. We're expecting TLE. Then we can work on the real actual meat of this problem. Expecting TLE here. All right, okay. Let's submit it. I'm gonna go grab some more coffee. Yeah, okay. Gilly is expected. Okay, 618, 608. Okay, so it took about 10 minutes. Oops. 10 minutes for. TLE, so brute force solution helped me to figure out uh, the crux of the problem, at least. The problem. Okay, next step. And the obvious next question is to how to speed of this computation. That is, instead of trying all possibilities, how do we find the max? We want to maximize the XOR between A and B with this X in common. Like how much, how many bits are in common where you can say, this is the best XOR we can have, right? A candidate is this guy. And so how do we maximize this candidate? Oops. Right, we want to 
align the X. We want to align, oops, align X with as many common zero, oops, zero, zero bits. Mean X and A as a pair and X B as a pair. All right, so twelve equals one zero one 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 zero zero, right? Eight times or eight plus four. 12 and then 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 4 plus 1. So we're saying the best x for this guy is 2. x equals 2, right? Because it's where the zeros align, right? So that this bit position. The zeros between A and B have the zero bits become zero bits, oops, common. So X is equal. So we have ancestral evidence of this. Let's see if that's true for these other examples and see if we can actually get past this one as well. And if so, I think this is a viable solution. And I'm going to take a coffee break and I'm going to pee here real quick pretty soon. <laughs> Drink a whole bunch of coffee. Okay. Anyhow, before I go and take a break, let's let's validate this for example two and three real quick and see if it is a viable solution or not. All right. If I get a, a sufficient amount of absolute evidence, I'll try right, to see what happens if this event and I try to get the implementation, but let's just see what's going on here. So A is six, so it's just, all right, four and two, and then it's B is seven. So that's guy and then we're seeing the best x is 25 holy cow 25 25 and that 25 is 16 right plus 9 which is 8 and wait 16 plus 9 is just 8 and one is that right Twenty. wait that's stupid isn't it this is a dumb example isn't it it could be 25, but that doesn't matter because XOR, wait, it's XOR and then it's XOR. If 25 works here, you're like, oh, what the heck is this? Why not? I'm going to raise the one for, right? For example, one, two. Right, what's going on here? All right, why would example one be two, but then example two would be this giant number? Why would we not want to have a leading one here as well? Oops. Right, these guys would be zeros. You put in a different octet. Right, so oops. Right. All right, these. Oops, raise the one here too, right? Because then it would be the XOR. This XOR with 12 would be one, 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 zero. And that's 16 plus 14. Is it 30? 30, right? One, zero, 
one one one. Sixteen plus seven is twenty-three, isn't it? Wait, what the heck? What is this number? In is... oh, because in is five. That's why. Okay. Oh, oops. Okay. Because n equals five. For example, two. I see. Okay. Oops. Okay, my attention was missing on that. N equals four. Two to the fourth is 16. Two to the fourth is 16. Right. Two to the fourth power is 16. Non-inclusive. That's why. 16 is non-inclusive, and this would be 18. Okay, yeah. As this would be... 18, right? And 16 plus 2, which exceeds 2 to the n. Okay, that makes sense, and I'm pretty sure this will work out. Right, so go to that 2 to the nth bit, and you might as well set them if you can. Okay, so if it's a zeroth bit there, we'll set it. Okay. Might as well always work with itself then to make it simple. Okay, 627 p.m. or a.m. And we're coming up with a better game plan, right? So we basically, basically failed with TLE earlier. Then came up with a better game plan. <laughs> Right, which is right, that's up there. Now here's the implementation of that game plan, right? So each i bit, right? I equals the n minus one bit, right? N minus one bit leave. Right. So n minus one. But in here, for example, one is four, right? In is four. The bits are three, two, one, and zero. Okay, so yeah, start at the n minus one bit. Basically, this guy. Start at n minus one bit. Okie dokie. N minus one, while. Well, I exceed zero, inclusive, decrement I as return best modulus mod, okie dokie, candidate, wait, 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 hold on, what are we doing here? Yeah, we want to set these things, so A equals, okay, so if, If okay, I think I was having some doubts, but I think I think this is the right track. So basically we want to see if these bits are not set in both A and B inclusive. And if so, then we might as well set it in our X. Which basically would be X board with A and x over to b, which is the same thing as a or equals shifted left by i. 
b or equals one to the left by i. One. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's see what happens here. 98, 630. Uh oh. Here I'm expecting 12. We're seeing six. Okay. <laughs> now we pass. Example. <laughs> Oops, example. Example. One and two, but fail on example three. What's going on here? I wonder what this one would output. Some giant number. Okay, at least it's modded by mod. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, so, oh, yeah, so this. Greedy choice is not actually correct. It's almost correct. Okay, yeah. So I think this is the problem. Yeah, the doubt I was having. The doubt I was having. All right, this this is not correct. So yeah, actually we did set that rightmost bit because it maximized the X or or maximize the sum of the two. So, okay, hold on. Let's do this. Let's, let's just say we, we do XOR with that bit. <laughs> right, so candidate will be A X ordered with X. Let's just make this X. So be two to the power of I, right? Which is n minus one initially. Now we'll be just as is. A times B. Alternative will be a XOR with X multiplied by B XOR with X. If the alternative exceeds what we have now, you might as well set it then, right? A or equals one shift to the left by I, B, or X or equals, right? X or equals one shift to the left by I as well. It's to or equals to B. All right, it might flip it. Okay, I think that's right then, right? Yeah, okay, and then this one changed to. Okay, I think that looks good. And if it's wrong, I'm going to take a break anyhow because I have to pee. <laughs> and I'll get some more coffee. Might as well, right? Okay, so 634 in the AM, hitting the submit button. We'll see what happens here. All right, that's accepted. Okay, cool. Yay. So the uh, implementation in Python 3 is accepted. Yay. Okay, and then we have 46 minutes left. Okay, this is cool. As well, I'll get some coffee and then start on this guy. Q4. Q4. And this is the hard part. Is this is the hard part. Right. So this has taken me, unicorn. This has taken me seven years to realize. About seven years, right? On the code that <laughs> Q1 through Q3 inclusive is the easy part, right? And Q4 is the hard part. Hard and easy being relative, right? So, on top of the seven years, I have 
12 additional years. So I have almost 20 years of experience. So, and not to toot my own horn, but this is basically where I'm at. And I see a lot of people here seem to be stuck on top of this, what I consider I stuck on myself. Adam Grant's Mount Stupid, right? Solving one through three. Oh, I'm like the most wonderful person. Let me go post this and brag on, on LinkedIn, you know, look, look at me, look at me, look at me. No, <laughs> no. Solving one through three is the easy part. Solving four, usually that's the more challenging part, right? So, and even if you do solve all four, which my friend Vlad, which is a totally legit dude that I, I support, he's part of the programming coach on LinkedIn. He solved pretty much every single lead code question. And he does this stuff for free too. He, he gives out interviews and he's here to help out folks. So, and we're both here to help. And yeah, before I start rambling on more, I'm gonna have some coffee, then I'm gonna read the problem statement. And there's a good chance, you know, based on the past, I'm not going to get this, but I'm going to have uh, a positive mindset, you know, to do, right? Hard is like scary for me, right? Me still, right? Do my best to, oops, to have a positive mindset, right? I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Right, I think I can, 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 I think I can. Right. Worst case, I don't get it right. You know, I make a complete fool out of myself in public, which I have multiple times. Right. Let's ask myself this question. Oops, yeah, question. What's the the worst that can happen? Right. I won't fail and make a fool out of myself in public, right? That is, I'm posting <laughs> this video to, oops, to uh, YouTube. All right, win, lose, or draw. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, and that's legit too. That's totally legit for me. And hopefully it helps you all. Hope it helps you all. Uh, worst case, I'll get stuck on this thing, and I'll, I'll just go back and I'll I'll solve one through three in different languages just for practice for coding accuracy, input retention comprehension, right, and all that jazz, right? Just practicing. Yep. Peak performance is just a daily practice, right, of all the basics, all the boring stuff that no one wants to do, right? Everyone's asleep right now. It's 6.30 in the a.m. Everyone's asleep and I'm working my ass off, you know, and I think a lot of other folks that are willing and able to here as well will benefit from these videos, you know, I hope so, you know. Stop rambling, let's get some coffee. I'll be right back.
All right, that, that coffee is all bitter and nasty. So I'm pretty sure I woke up like an hour or two earlier here and <laughs> made that say, so, okay, the coffee's good, so I'm not going to drink it. All right, so it's 41 a.m. Took a little bit of break, right? Took a break. And it's time to read this problem statement in Time to Shine. Here we go. And building heights, okay. I height is less than the jth height. And next to the leftmost building where they can meet. Can you go up and down? Oh, we can only go down. Okay, so Alice and Bob can go towards each other. Let me read this in more detail. Look at the constraints of the problem statement. Okay, so let's see with the input array of heights. Then we have these queries. Okay, so offhand when I see this, I think I think like what's the crux, right? What's the crux? It's gonna be TLE. How to avoid usually pre-processing the input. The input into a data structure in a favorable way, favorable way, right? Which helps to avoid repeated calculations. Anyhow, that's just like my spidey sense goes off based on experience here. You could consider that wisdom, but it is in the end a, a cognitive bias, right? And it's often foolish. <laughs> What do I know, right? And it's best to have an open mind, I think. Okay, so here we go. What do I know there, right? You're giving it another re. Right, okay, so Alice is here in building zero, Bob's in building one, right? It's IJ, it's a pair. And they can't move there. Okay, yeah, so we should be able to pre-process the moves and then do O of one calculations based on those moves, right? So that's what I'm thinking offhand. All right, pre-process input. Input for O of one lookups right. for query. Okay, so here's our answer for this guy. Let's just step through it and see if we can validate. Right, so, so validation basically is the step where you say, okay, well, actually, you know, psychologically, here's, here's what we do, right? So there's different steps. The first step is input, right? Read problem statement. Right, which turns into comprehension. Two, right, it's like kind of like brainstorming. Right, this is like known, like bridging known to unknown. Right, this is like kind of like what if, deductive, inductive reasoning, right? Right. Proofs like contradictions, safe moves and such, right? Such, okay. And then step three is the actual um, implementation, right? So this is more of uh right, this is more of uh creative process and it's it's not concrete, right? This is something that is actually like physical manifestation, manifestation, right? The actual implementation. Oops. Implementation. Oops. Implement. Imp. Implementation in a specific language. Uh, 
And this is the actual concrete, right? It's dense. This is more of like a mythical abstraction, right? Right, kind of an idea in my head. And the conscious mind. Yeah, that's what I think to myself. <laughs> Where am I going with this? I don't know. That's what I've been doing. Oh, yeah. I asked myself the other day, like, how do you solve a leak code question? When I first started, it's like, I don't know. What the heck is a leak code? And yeah, later I find out it's useful for speed reading practice as well as attention practice and such, right? You can you can see as I ramble on where my intention is. It's kind of all over the place sometimes. <laughs> Anyhow, where I was at before I started rambling is that this is our validation for each of these queries. So for the query zero, 01, all right, for the query zero, 01, that is, Alice is at index zero and Bob is at index one. The heights of the buildings from Alice and Bob, which we'll say here to do this A and B. And I, was, I might as well just call them IHA for Alice and Bob correspondingly. Right? They can meet each other. So adjacent values should be able to meet each other always, right? Because one's always going to be, oh, unless they're equal. OK. OK, so how do we simplify the constraint of the problem statement? Concise uh, problem statement is this, right? Leftmost building, the index of the leftmost building. This is our answer. Yeah. Focus on what our goal is, right? <laughs> what are we aiming for? Make sure we're actually solving the right problem, right? To do, right? Make sure we are actually solving. Oops. Okay, where are we? We're at 31 minutes left. This one's taking a little while. I want to capture a screenshot of this where we're at, just so I don't lose track of where we're at and what times we have. Unfortunately, when you do these leak code contests virtually, you lose this information unless if you capture it ahead of time like I am now. And I'll try to remind myself when the contest ends to capture a more accurate screenshot, because this is not exactly where I'm going to land, right? I'll be still got 30 minutes, so it could change. Uh, anyhow, it would be somewhere around there, ballpark, right? And this is me doing just Python 3 like I would in a real contest, not doing all the languages, right? Uh, so anyhow, focus, right? Focus to do. <laughs> focus. <laughs> focus my attention on the problem statement here. Here we go. Okay, so... Okay, so this is the first query, so let's do this, just walk through Q1. Okay, so the leftmost building they can meet at is one. Is it, why is it saying two? What the heck? Heights? In the first query, What building two heights zero is less than two, that's fine. Heights one is less than two. 
Any other building, if I is less than J and the heights of I is less than J, so you can move up. That's all you can do. We can only move up, right? Here's the constraint of the problem statement is saying we can only move up. Right, you can only go up and up in the heights and right in the index, up and right, up and right, up and right, up and right, okay, up and right. Zero is less than two. Okay, so oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So Alice is here, and Alice hops all the way to there. Okay, so this is just kind of strange, right? So they both immediately jump over here. And they can do that hop. We can meet the leftmost. It's the leftmost value that's greater. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Okay. <laughs> leftmost. Leftmost. I'm going to index, right? Leftmost index. A such that I is less than K and J is less than K and A sub I is less than K and A sub J is less than K. A sub K, isn't it? A sub K. Oops. I, J, and all these Ks. He could be in, I'm gonna hop somewhere. What if Alice and Bob are already on the same building? Index of left most building where they meet. So yeah, if they're equal, then it's it's just itself, isn't it? Simple corner case, isn't it? Yeah, it does not mention here, but simple corner case when I uh, the query query, right? I J when I is equal to J, then answer is just I, right? Same index. Otherwise, we have to find this kth index, which is still sometimes Alice and Bob are not one to the left and one to the right. It doesn't matter who's Alice and who's Bob. So we might as well change those, right? Here he is equals sorted A, B for A, B in queries. That way, Alice and Bob, it doesn't really matter, right? Alice will always be to the left and Bob will always be to the right. 
and have to deal with these guys, which are kind of backwards. I don't think that matters. I think it's safe. Answer. Turn the answer at the end here. We might be able to formulate it functionally. Might as well just do this with burp force first and then optimize. It's at 6.57 in the AM. Brute force implementation expected to TLA. Okay. For IJ queries. Oh, let's do this. Okay. Now he's less than J. As if I is equal to J. It'll be the cardinality of the heights. Just say it's a gray a. The a b the input array heights. So we can see that constraint. As well, choose a ternary operator here. Always a pin something. <laughs> if I is less than or equal to J, which it has to be since it's sorted, K equals J. Hold on now, for what kth value, if k is less than n, k if k is less than n, well, k is less than n, and a sub i is greater than or equal to a sub k, or a sub j is greater than or equal to k, right? It has to be the other way around in order to jump to that k. A will be the index of the leftmost building we can meet at. Okay, something like that. 
Is that right? I don't think so. No, it's not right. Okay, so something's not right here. So the 1 a.m. What's going on here? Let's see, so maybe this one's right, but the second one's not. No, that's not right. So negative one is not correct. For example, one x that's not right oh, okay so we can start debugging that one and as well as this one this one doesn't look right either oops well wouldn't be the first time i got something wrong <laughs> kind of close all right that one's no good <clears throat> Okay, so it's 702, 702 a.m. Start debugging. Oh, no, this is not right. This is not like this code <laughs> is not doing what I want it to do. What's going on? All right. This can be very costly during the contest to, to have to debug these things. It's, it's usually where the majority of my time goes, right? Making implementation is not correct. Sometimes I solve the wrong problem, right? Oops. Uh, sometimes, yeah, it's just a coding uh, error, like a software defect, right? Okay, so hey, what's going on here? Up there. You know, up here, if the height is less than that height, we can go there, right? We can go there. So, well, we cannot go there, we're saying, right? Cannot go there, cannot go there. This guy can't go there, or that guy can't go there. Reach IJ, right? Where did? Oh, you can hop there if it's less than so. It has to be J plus five, isn't it? J plus one. It's not inclusive of J, unless if I does equal J, right? It does I always have to be less than J? Like they start off on different. No, no, here's two and two, right? Okay. If I, oops, equals J, oops, continue, right? If I equals J, then we'll just say answer that append, oops, I. Otherwise, It should be inclusive still, right? K equals J. If I equals J, then what? Well, yeah, what the heck? It should be. It should be fine, isn't it? What the? What is going on here? So example one, we're seeing this last query is two, two. Oh crap. So that's the case where I equals J. Oh. Okay, so fine. this is ugly code, but we'll fix it up later, right? Oops. Might as well have a correct solution. Come on. If I equals J, then. Okay, so that should solve Q1 or an example one, right? Okay, that looks good. But then example two is still not right. Okay.
missed, oops, corner case, and an I equals J in the coding implementation. I did think about that though, and I did see it in example one, or I equals J is two and two. Okay, so that's fixed, but then this problem still occurs, right? It looks like this is still the same. Yes, it is, okay. So we have to fix problem two, okay. So that took about four minutes, no six. Where's my time going? Four minutes to recognize this, right? So loss of intention. Miss that. My spidey senses go off here, though. I'd like to clean that up if, if and when I can. Might as well leave that there here now for the correct implementation. Okay, and then we need to check what's going on here. Let's go up here. Seven F seven. Yeah, let's see how much time we have left. 14 minutes. Okay. Oops. Seven F seven. I have 14 minutes left. So we'll end at 7.21. Contest ends around 7.21. Okay, I might as well grab a screenshot of where I'm gonna land here. Somewhere closer to here. I'm gonna lose this info. Fourteen minutes left in the contest. So prime one. Just to keep track of where I am at what times. This is awesome. This dude does this in 10 minutes. Holy cow. <laughs> That's all right. You know, but people fast is slow and slow is fast, right? So we can go somewhere slow or nowhere fast in this life. Fast is slow. Turtle. Slow is fast with people. Fast is slow and slow is fast. At least that's what I tell myself, you know, so I don't get discouraged looking at these other folks solve all four in 10 minutes. Holy cow. You know, I think some of the folks cheat and then some of the folks are legit. So uh, regardless, I think I can be one of those folks. It's a contestant, not just a participant. It all comes down to Q4 though, really. Okay, so yeah, we have 14 minutes left, right? 12 minutes left. Okay, let's, let's jam on oops, let's jam on this guy. 709. Let's start debugging. Oops, 709 AM. Debug example two. What the heck is going on here? All right, okay, so the first query is not correct. So let's just focus on that first query. Here's this guy. Our first query is zero through seven. It's the big one. It was like Zero through seven. Okay, so example two, grab our input array here. Look at zero through seven, what's going on. And by the way, this is only the brute force, right? This is not the actual implementation that's going to be accepted. And so, okay, I is zero, J is seven. And this is guy, the cardinal name for A. Okay, and then what are we saying here? You're expecting it to be seven. So here it says J inclusive, which is important, not J plus one. Oh, oops, J. Okay, that's if J hops to a value different than himself. J equals K or if J is equal to K, then it's fine. If 
t is not equal to k, then that has to hold, right? Wait, g is no good. Hold on. Yeah, my attention span is off to obviously exhausted, right? <laughs> Having a hard time making some basic thoughts here about how to deduce this. So I can make a little bit uglier code in that what if I jumps directly to J? Correct. If I is, I must be less than J if they're not equal, right? Because it's sorted. A sub I is less than A sub J. can't go directly there. These are for Ks that's not good. K is less than N. If k is equal to k is less than n, then the n is dependent on the k. Otherwise, if k is equal to n, depend, made direct, right? This is really ugly for quality of thought. If direct is less than n, I use direct. Otherwise, if we can't go directly there either, it's negative one. Seven looks good. It's ugly code, which I really do not like. But let's see if it's correct for these other queries. And then once we have a correct solution, oops, then we should be able to start looking for ways to enhance that solution. Seven minutes left. Oops, seven minutes. Okay, is this right? I don't know, let's see. Oops, this is not right. Okay, so this is what I want. I'm aiming for this. And yeah, that looks, no, the last one's not correct. Okay. Wait a sec, hold on. Which one am I? Um, it should be a six, but it looks like I'm giving a seven. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. Direct might be better than the minimum of K and direct here. Okay, so the minimum of K and direct is six. That looks good. Okay, so this should TLE, it's 715. I'm about to run out of time on Q4 here. Should TLE, right? And then with the correct TLA implementation, then we can start saying, okay, how do we optimize this so we don't have to do these calculations over and over again, right? And that's the crux of the problem. Okay, so 7.15 TLA as expected. So the next question is, oops, how do you avoid TLA? <laughs> Or acceptance, right? Uh, right. And basically, we're basically we are running through. I don't know. I guess yeah. Performing a linear scan. Linear scan of the input. Ugh. Scan of the input array A for the left 
most index k such that i and j can can jump right to k right jump is possible if and only if right a sub i is less than a sub k and a sub j is less than k a sub k right and i has to be strictly less than j for those hops right? i is less than k and j is less than k unless we go direct which is another corner case okay corner case that i missed here was direct Oops, okay. Second corner case is miss is direct J, which is better than K. So this is a correct implementation that creates some ugly code. Yeah, right, and we know this is low quality of thought based on the non concise mint of the code, right? It's very verbose. Verbose code is not intelligent. Verbose complex code is the opposite of intelligent. Intelligent is simple, concise, and such, right? So we'll land somewhere around here. And then I'll go through this and I'll solve these questions each in piecemeal fashion using other languages. I might clean it up a little bit. They're pretty straightforward, right? And nothing too fancy going on. Take the best of now, the alternative, right? Okay. So we got a couple minutes. I I don't think I'm gonna solve this one in time here. Here's our breadcrumbs of where we were. Right, it's still stuck on Q4. So to do solve Q4. Right for AC within the 90 minute threshold of the leak code contest bell, right? Time. My right, time is out. But I had a good time and hopefully you all had fun with me, right? Two minutes left, and I highly doubt I'm gonna solve this in time here, but I, I do have enough time to monitor the clock for 721. When this contest will end, I'll try to get a snapshot of where I would have landed had I actually participated for reals. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we think about this in reverse. What for each index? This is it's kind of like a graph, right? Maybe this is a graph. You can hop there. I mean, what if we, yeah, let's do this. What if we consider this a graph problem for each ij, edge, ij, <laughs> out, if a sub i is less than a sub j, In that case, in this case, there's a quadratic pairs. Yeah, I, I still need to look at this, right? Okay, we got a few seconds left. I'll land some around here. And yeah, thanks for joining me on this, this journey. It was fun, I had a good time. So I had half the contest, about 45 minutes for Q4. I did some rambling and my attention was lost, right? <laughs> so <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, I think the contest is about over now. Holy cow. Six seconds, five seconds. We'll land somewhere around here. I didn't want to get six, six, six.
little demon mode or something here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is about where we'll land. Six, six, seven. Okay. Well, you know, while I'm here, I might as well just post these. So I've got three out of four. Oops, let's see, go to contest and my contest virtual. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the screenshot is accurate. The latest screenshot that I got, 667. And that's good to be aware of where we are in time as well. So I had one, this is the TLE, right? Yeah. Okay. Three minutes, 11 minutes, 43 minutes. Okay, well, hey, I definitely have a lot of room for improvement, right? But yeah, just one step at a time, right? So it seems like a pretty decent solution. I right? just might as well just go perform a linear scan of A, B, and C of cardinality X, Y, and Z correspondingly, right? It's fine. Threshold, how about would be the minimum? So we don't have to recalculate this over and over again. That's a pretty decent code. Stick this on one line. No, 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 no. They're slightly different, right? T. Might as well put parentheses around these so we can read this a little bit easier. Right, so if we don't even have anything, then it's negative one. Okay, so let's put some solutions here. A few solutions. I'm going to perform, oops, perform a linear scan of each input array. Oops. A, B, C. For each ith index from zero until t non-inclusive zero to t I am from zero inclusive to t non-inclusive while <coughs> This constraint a sub i is equal to b sub i, oops, is equal to c sub i is satisfied. All right, that sounds good. So Kotlin, JavaScript, Python 3. Rest, C plus plus, okay, so this is Python 3, let's do this, put I and T on the same line, since they're associated with each other, right? Y has to be less than We call the same in. It is weird. He is weird, right? Okay. Get that big dopamine boost for the brain once that thing turns green. And it's super cool. Let's dug it totally sticked when that happens. Okay, so zero to n non-inclusive, right? And zero inclusive to n non-inclusive. Right. Where n is the minimum cardinality 
of the input arrays. Of the input arrays A, B, C correspondingly as X, Y, Z. All right, it doesn't matter. We can use whatever characters you want, but that sounds good enough. Right, then, then return the leftovers. As you see this guy. If and only if zero is less than i. That is at least one character. must straight, must be in common. A sub zero. Return negative one. A sub zero. Not right. A sub zero. It's P sub zero equals C sub zero. Let's do not right. Exclamation marks fine, right? That's okay. Now perform a linear scan of the input array A, B, C. Each of the input, um, the input arrays A, B, and C. This is zero inclusive to the nin non inclusive, where n is the minimal cardinality of the arrays A, B, and C correspondingly as X, Y, and Z. Commenting I while the constraint is satisfied. From I to the end of each. Input C, correspondingly as x minus i, y minus i, and z minus i, if and only if i is greater than zero, that is at least one character must be in common between a, b, and c. Otherwise, hey, that looks pretty good. Nothing too fancy. And here we go. Let's do this in the other languages and then move on. Really glad not to see the Amazon dude <laughs> as the topmost solution here. Thank goodness. Hopefully he did something else. So cool. There's a Yoda. <laughs> That's silly. All right, whatever. Okay, so X, Y, and Z. Let's do this actually just to make a tuple. A dot size, B dot size, and C dot size should be fine, right? And we'll just tie it to a if it works here. Less typing. And we're not taking by reference, taking by value. And then return. So you also need a I and an N. It should be a pair. 
zero, the minimum of x, y, and z. If i exceeds zero, then we'll turn x minus i plus y minus i plus z minus i. Otherwise, we're turning to one, right? We have to have at least one character in common while i is less than n. And it holds that a sub i is equal to b sub i, and b sub i is equal to c sub i. Notice how much verbose this is in C++ compared to Python 3. So Python 3 is super cool in that it allows us to write expressions like this. And how cool is that, right? You don't have to have b sub i redundantly written here. Right? Increment i. OK, so there we go. Uh-oh. No matching function, really? I thought that would work out fine. OK, fine. We'll just make a tuple. Looks good. All right, that's accepted. Okay, do Kotlin JavaScript in. Kotlin next, how about B, C, I, and N. X, Y, and Z will be the cardinality of the input array, A, B, and C correspondingly as a triple. Here, zero, and the minimum. Let's do this list of x, y, and z, not min. Unwrapped. I uh, is less than n, and a sub i is equal to b sub i. And again, this is going to be redundant. b sub i is equal to c sub i. Increment, oops, increment i, return if i exceeds zero, that is at least one of the characters are in common between a, b, and c, there's a sub zero, b sub zero, and c sub zero, then we'll return x minus i plus y minus i plus c minus i, otherwise we're returning it over one. Sure, it's taken a while. Okay, that looks good. Big money, no enemies. Okay, that's cool. Oops. Okay, there's Kotlin. Looks good. Do JavaScript and then Rust and move on. JavaScript. A, B. C. Okay. Let X, Y, and Z be the cardinality and array A, B, and C correspondingly. Right, where A, B, and C are strings, which are just basically arrays of characters. Let I and N be the pair of zero. In the minimum of x, y, and z. Well, i is less than n, and the constraint holds that a sub i is equal to b sub i, b sub i is equal to c sub i, increment i. If i exceeds zero, then return the leftovers basically, right? So, oops. Otherwise, negative one. Looks good. All right, that's cool. Okay, we'll do this in rest and then move on. A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. Cardinality of those guys. Oops, yeah. Let's just do let. This would be triple. Might as well, yeah, we'll keep it as a new size. 
want to cast it to I32 eventually there. Mutable I will be zero and then N will be the minimum. Those three, you can do a factor of X, Y, Z, into iter min unwrapped. Okay, so while i is less than n not inclusive and a sub i is equal to b sub i, okay, in order to get these things in the length, we have to actually change these. You know, chars dot collect into a vector string. A vector of characters actually. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. I'll do the same for B and C then too, right? Oops. Okay. B sub on a. Oops. I think of the C sub i. i is incremented by one. Then if i exceeds zero, then we'll return this. Otherwise, we'll return negative one. So i32. I wonder if we have to cast in here or not. We'll see what happens. I'm certain the rest compiler will complain a time or two before this is accepted. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so in this case, we want to turn x minus i plus y, oops, y minus i plus z minus i as i32. Okay, let's see what happens here. It doesn't like that. Okay, I see. This friends should be okay. Oh, come on. Oh, Nick. Oh, dang. That's a U size. Huh. Why is it trying to be a U size? Oh, the negative one is obviously not a U size. Oh, I see. Okay. The if and else need to have the same type sense. It's horribly verbose, but. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Need just one print. Make this a little bit less horrible, but. So I32. Okay, that should work, right? Big money, no Emmys. Yeah, okay, that works. That's good. Okay, post this scan, we'll move on, right? Perform the linear scanning for A's, A, B, and C for each height index with zero. And I can zero in. Zero inclusive or non inclusive. Color M is the minimum cardinality of for A's, A, and B corresponding to X, Y, and Z. Looks good. Okay. And yeah, if y'all have any questions, let me know. I'm about to take a break here, though. I'm getting a little bit more now. This is pretty simple, right? If if you have an I, then it's zero. Move it forward. You have a J, that's one. Move it backwards. I did make the mistake, though, that I incarnated these before I calculated the total. I remember that turned negative. So this is pretty decent code, though. It is only used once, so I might as well just move this guy. Yeah, this is decent code. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, I get the expected answer now. It's no longer contests. That's cool. Let's let's jam on this in the other languages, right? We basically just greedily move two pointers i and j as the search space. Whenever we have to, we can't move i to the right, we can't move j to the left, then we have to swap them. 
at the cost of ion share, right? New solutions. About three. Oops. Okay, so there's a solution. All right, so uh, let's see. Let I J be the leftmost and rightmost index of the input string S of cardinality in as zero and rightmost Sounds good. And move I to the right. A increment I by one. Never S of I Oops. zero. Move J to the left, a decrement. Point right, right and left. You guys go that way. So it's this way. Decrement J by I just check them in J, right? Uh, this is by one. Never. So J is equal to one. Otherwise, we cannot perform one or inclusive or two. Then swap. at a cost of j minus i. The i j pair. The cost i plus j, I don't know, j minus i, right? The basically the, the distance and the indices and return the total t cost. Yeah, it seems to make sense to me. If y'all have any questions, let me know. <laughs> it's, it's intended to be helpful, right? Long as long, long. Shut this up a bit if we can, right? LLT is our total. Oops. In there. Okay, so IJ is our search space. Zero to S dot size. It's, has to be at least one if we're going to subtract by it. Notably, this is super sketchy to do in production code, subtracting by this without casting by that is a recipe for disaster when S is empty, right? It's just, this is a U size, subtracting from a U size will make a gigantic positive number. Anyhow, let's see. Mile minus less than J. If S of I is equal to zero, then we're going to come at i. If, else if, i sub j is equal to 1, then we're going to come at j. Otherwise, t plus k equals j minus i. And then we'll decrement this guy and then come at this guy. Holy cow, that looks ugly. OK, hold on. All right. <laughs> Not trying to produce ugly code. Oops. I'm just trying to make that look like an atomic operation if we can. 
and then try to let this code line up vertically. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it should be like this, right? And then, yeah. All right. Whatever. It's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? C++. Do this in Rust. Oops. Let's do this in Kotlin. JavaScript. Okay. Kotlin. Here's our stream. T is our total, which would be a long turn the end here. And then let's see. Um, J is the pair zero. This guy is length plus one. While Y is less than J. Oops. If S of I is equal to zero, then plus is I. Otherwise, if S of J is equal to one, decrement J. Otherwise, total is J minus I, the distance between the indices, and then we'll increment I, decrement J. Big money, no whammies. One, two, and zero looks good. Yay. Big old dopamine rush when that thing turns green. Woohoo! You know, get a reward. Okay. It'll be our total return here. Oops. I and J, pair zero, currently in for A, S, to be in minus one, while I is less than J, then if S of I is equal to zero, and I, Y is if S of J is equal to one, take a J, otherwise, total is the distance between the indices. Increment I, decrement J. Let's go straight to submit. The black level dangerously. All right, that's cool. Let's just update. Do rest. <clears throat> Can I say the best for last year? Here's your string. S will be S dot chars dot collect into a vector. Oops, vector string and characters. Zero, oops, I and J are both be mutable indices for leftmost and rightmost indices of the array of characters as zero. That's telling me minus one as U sizes. Again, rest is something that will overflow if we subtract one from zero, so that's not cool. Make sure one is at least the minimum, which it is. That's safe. All right, well, I is less than J. If this of I is equal to zero, then I can I will pull else if this of J is equal to one, oops, J plus uh, minus equals one, right? Take a J. Otherwise, T plus equals the difference between J minus I, increment I, decrement J. Turn up T at the end. Oh, T actually is a uh, I. T is oh T is name defined. Oops. Yeah, T equals zero I six four zero U six four and zero I six four. Might as well cast it at the end here. U six four. U six four. 
six former. Just, uh, so I don't have to cast it all the time here. Uh oh. Oops. Oh, come on. I get out and push this thing. Oops. Oh, it's in a semicolon. Come on. Let's go. Ah. Hmm. Really? A U64? Huh. Let that be the same thing. The I64 casts a U size to I64 is okay, maybe? U size. U size. Be cast to you size. There, let's make it explicit. Should be you size. Oh, it needs to be mutable, yeah. Oops. Come on, big money, no Emmys. Yay. Dopamine hit. All right, that's cool, right? The IGA be the leftmost and rightmost index inclusive. I guess this is free, right? Free and the other one will cost you. Right, this guy's free. This guy's free. This one will cost you. That's the Mr. Money Bags. Okay, that looks good, right? Let IJ be the leftmost and rightmost, in minus uh, zero and in minus one, inclusive, right? That looks good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, there's problem two, and then holy cow, this is like the forever, <laughs> the forever uh, contest. I know it ended a long time ago, but whatever. I'll just post this last one, and then we'll upsolve Q4. <laughs> Add Q4 to the upsolve bucket. This one is fun, right? Having a noun and alternative, right? So if it can improve upon now, then we'll just take it, right? So this one is fun. Mod is only used once here in Python, but in the other languages, we'll have to do a mod calculation. Do we? Stop that. This time is that 250th. It's a big ass number. Yeah, and the nice thing about Python 3 is it does give us this option, right? come up and upsell this one in the other languages. I think I'm going to take a break here. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to come up with something clever, right, for the other languages. Since Python 3 <laughs> handles uh, large integers, well, we can Right, consider right, let's just use augmenting <laughs> augmenting each ith bit
within the uh, the input integers a oops b that is we readily x or with A and B, right? Greatly X or A and B with X equals two to the power two to the power of I scrunch that up a little bit. That is we have two choices and we choose the maximum. For each I I. Bit from zero to n minus two inclusive and we choose the maximum choice one is include Food. Include math bit in next door. The other case. Case two is to exclude. Exclude ith bit next door is case two. Oh, yeah. Let this be the alternative. Alt. Let this candidate right, denote this candidate as the alternative to as is now, right? Now would be this guy. I right, denote this candidate as is, as now, right? It's now. That sounds good. Yeah. Mm. 
and we'll come up and do this in the other languages later, whatever. Okay, that's good. All right, since Python 3 handles large integers well, we can consider augmenting each i bit within the input ring and integers a and b. That is, we agree the xor a and xor b, right? And xor b with x equals 2 to the ith power. And we have two choices, right? For each of these ith bits, right? Choose the maximum. Case one, include the ith bit in the XOR. The green thing associated with the include. The little red thing associated with the exclude. You sound good. Actually, we don't have to go in reverse order, right? Might as well just go for i in range n minus one. And we don't have to do this part, right? That'd make it a little bit better. Now the alternative. Oops. Might as well just stick this on online too. Let's see. Easier to understand now an alternative. All right, include and exclude. Two. And it's kind of backwards, but now it all seems to make sense. This is like the current, this is the future. I think of time from left to right, because we read from left to right. Left to right is how a lot of things are done chronologically. So we'll write code and left to right. So our brain doesn't really have to work too hard, right? Make things easy on ourselves, work with ourselves and our basic biology, not against ourselves. Oops, well, that's wrong. <laughs> Holy cow. Here I go rambling on and then I'm wrong. Oops. What did I do? This one's accepted. So what did I, what did I break? Hold on. This worked. And then I came here and rambled on and broke it. Oh, we do need to go from right to left. Or yeah, left to right. Most significant to least significant. Okay. Order does matter. Most significant to least significant then. I should write this down because it is oops. Pretty sure that matters. Okay, oops. So that should work. N minus one down to zero. Right? No. Okay, that doesn't matter then. Okay. Like, yeah, what did I break? Hmm. Okay, hold on. This one, yeah, this worked, right? This is accepted. Right, this is accepted, yeah. So what the heck did I do? What could I have done that broke this thing? Where am I? That's here, okay. Here's where I broke it. Really, how could this matter? Oh, that's non-inclusive. Okay, that does matter, I see, okay, oops. Crap. Oh, well, well, there you go. You can see my attention is, it's shot, right? It's a good workout and I am exhausted. I need to take a break. Okay, uh, oops, where did I put, where did I put? I thought I was posting a solution. What the heck? Okay, huh? Well, just a loser by accident. Oh, 
Oh, okay, well, all right, well, a few solutions, and so I'll type it again, whatever. Click on three. And I wonder if I can make a back, maybe I can find it. So I did type it up pretty nice, right? We can avoid having to retype it, it might be nice. Can I go backwards? Back. Oh, here we go. Oh, I already posted it. Oops, I was about to post again. Okay, cool. Now, all I want to do is just grab this code and then take a break, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm stumbling on my own toes here. Oops, okay. Uh, no one's perfect, especially me, right? Make lots of mistakes. But this is better code, right? <laughs> my from zero to in inclusive. <laughs> take the best. Now we're an alternative. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. I'm gonna take a break. I'm I'm worn out. We'll catch y'all later. Hey, have a good Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> it's eight oh seven. 8.07 a.m. and I, I started like a, a couple hours ago, so <laughs> I'm past you for a break. See y'all. <laughs>